Hi guys, hope you're doing alright. Today and for the next week or so we're going to be talking about magnets. The primary reason for why physicists have cared about magnets is because they're so related to electricity. Spoiler alert, actually, they're one and the same thing. Like, what? That makes no sense. How does the electricity that powers my devices, how is that related to the magnets I put in my fridge? There is a, a, a fundamental relationship there. And so that's one thing that, uh, one reason to, to care about, like, why magnets work because they're so related to, to, to circuits and electricity. Uh, but it's also, they're also involved in our everyday life. So that's why I wanted to make the topic of this video. Um, and before I dive into that further, I wanted to highlight my, the bird's nest outside my window. It's pretty cool. Uh, the mom bird is pretty fat, and she sits on her babies, two babies, all day long, while the dad goes out and gets food. Yeah, life in quarantine. Uh, okay, so magnets. We got the permanent magnets that you hang up all your A's in physics class on, on your fridge. That's one class. You gotta you have magnets involved in your in your electronics, your phone, uh, memory storage. Uh, I believe is related to to storing. Uh, so storing data is uh, at least for CDs um, was involved with magnets. Uh, honestly, with the new tech nowadays, I, I I'm, they might have moved away from that. Um, but yeah, then that's one underlying thing. Uh, MRI machines in, in hospitals. Uh, the Earth has a magnetic field, so why isn't the sun just like roasting everything on the Earth's planet? Because the Earth has a magnetic field. Um, and I, I believe actually that some birds use Earth's magnetic field to navigate. So tons of entry points into, into magnets, tons of connections. The one that I personally care about most is, uh, is, is it's kind of anchored in this device. I don't know if you know what this is. This is a DC motor. And the way that it works basically is I have a battery over here. I use some Play-Doh. That's our sponsor for today's video for helping me put this together. Uh, when I connect the two wires to the battery, the motor spins. Uh, and if I disconnect it, it goes off. I just connected a um, little plastic toy uh, fan to the edge of it, but the main thing is that it's 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 this part uh, that causes the spinning. It's not really the uh, plastic piece at the edge. So that is a motor. I connect the motor to electrical energy, and you have motion. What do you think happens when I cause this to spin? connect this to electrical energy, it causes this to spin. So what happens when I spin this? You might be able to guess it. When I spin this, that generates electricity, that generates a current. And that is actually very much related to wind turbines. The wind turns the wind turbines, but how is that spinning generating electricity? It's, it's a motor running in reverse. And spoiler alert, what's the basis of a motor? It's very intertwined with magnets. Um, so magnets are the foundation for how we generate so much of our electricity, even burning fossil fuels. Ultimately, that that burning, that, that explosion, those explosions are used to turn something that, that generates electricity um, if it's powering the grid. And if it's in your car, then it's just turning the wheels. Uh, so that's really our entry point. Um, the next part of the video is going to be looking inside what is what is going on inside this motor. How does it relate to magnets? Uh, that is all. Okay, guys, welcome to this teardown video of the motor. Uh, so you can see the bottom is held to the rest of it by these four metal bends. So what I did is I took a plier and I sort of bent it bent it outwards so that this base would pop out. And this is what you get. So this is the base. When the base pops out, let's look at the base real quick. You see those wires are connected to these two things. That's really all there is. It's just this thing and this thing. And the key thing is like these are brushes. And they're free to move. And so what are they brushing up against? Well, boom. Can you see it? You may not know what you're looking at. Um, if I, my magnets aren't strong enough, but you would be able to see like, hey, this 
pit, bit right here, this black circle around the edge, that's a magnet. Can you tell what those shiny things are in the center? Those are coils of wire. Uh, I believe it's just copper wire. Those brushes that I showed you before, they brush up against this thing, and this entire thing is free to move. So I just want to remind you, when you connect the, this motor to a battery or to a current, that'll cause this to spin. And if I do the reverse, if I cause this to spin, somehow this arrangement, it's generating current in the wires. Uh, so this particular arrangement is pretty engineered and it's kind of complex. Um, it's, it's designed to be efficient and to be durable. But the basic principles are not too hard to, to understand and demonstrate, and that's what we're going to dive into next. Uh, if you have a DC motor, I encourage you to take one apart carefully, maybe with some adult supervision, um, if you're not comfortable, and, and, and see what's inside. And maybe even you want to take it apart further. Uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that little teardown video of a motor slash generator. I wanted to share two final ideas, uh, two final things. The first is I was inspired by a talk from Nadia Mason. She gave a TED talk on sparking scientific curiosity. And I thought it was a great talk. Please do check it out. One thing that stuck with me was she brought magnetic demos on stage, which I thought was just cool, especially because some of that stuff I would have done with you guys if we were in class together. Um, so it was just timely to see that. Uh, so, so yeah, please do check it out. She, she, her research is on superconductors, and she actually brought a uh, levitating superconductor magnet. Um, so yeah, check that out. She encouraged her basic idea was take, don't be afraid to take things apart and see how they work. Um, and I think that's like a sort of virtuous cycle of, you wonder how this thing works, you take it apart and you have more questions and can cultivate like wonder and curiosity. So yeah. Second thing I wanted to mention was like this stuff isn't just theoretical. Um, I said it before, how we turn those generators is key to our future. Um, whether it'll be you know from fossil fuels or nuclear or renewables um, and it's not something that's like happening far away uh, you can't just build a generator um, you know on your rooftop to supply all the energy you need not but in your city the way the market works is con edison owns the distribution so like the electricity uh wires and the poles and the network basically um, and they're your default supplier but you also have the choice of switching your supplier. Con Edison, by default, will, is trying to minimize the price. So to get that lowest price, they are relying heavily on fossil fuels. Some energy services companies, ESCOs, E-S-C-O, they support renewables and sell that uh, directly to, to consumers. And so Con Ed is still delivering it, but you're sort of paying and crediting a different supplier. So that's sort of one way that New Yorkers currently, right now, can support uh, renewable renewable energy. The trade-off is the price per kilowatt hour might be a, a few cents more, um, maybe like eight cents compared to eleven cents, uh, maybe as high as eighteen cents in some, depending on where you live. Um, so, so that's an option. Uh, there's also something called community solar, where you sign up and I'm not really sure how, but basically they, they just give you like a 10% savings if you sign up to support a community solar project near you. Probably some mix of, of tax incentives allows them to pass on that savings. Uh, but it's those are just two things ready right now that are that are involved in, in how we generate energy. My main point being this stuff isn't far away. It's It's happening right now if you kind of look for it. It's just not, well, no. So those are the two, two main things I want to share. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it generated some curiosity and, uh, and, and maybe some wonder for you. Take care.